reflect on what he said here and tell you my thoughts about this. Basically, what he's saying, um, you've got all these esoteric eyed modern scholars of his day saying that we've got to get under the Gospels and uh, what the church is telling us is not true. The Gospels are of later antiquity, that a later date, they're not actually uh, decent historical source material. They don't go to the first century, they're probably all second century documents. These are the kind of ideas that were being spouted at the time of Tischendorf. What Tischendorf does is just go to the historical documents. He goes to the historical information, things that scholars already knew but just overlooked and didn't give them the weight that they deserved. So he goes to Irenaeus, uh, ancient apostolic father and he notices in Aris, uh, Irenaeus' writing that he's quoting the four gospels and that he says the four gospels are like the four corners of the earth and what he's saying is look this is just really good historical information that we're getting here and we're just pushing it aside and if we listen to this historical information it's telling us the gospels were not first century but second century not only second century but written by the people that we believe they were written by. And then he goes on to Tertullian, who, who is combating Martian, who denied some of the Gospels because they were Jewish, and anything Jewish, Irenaeus, uh, Martian did not want in, in, in his canon. So Tertullian is combating this, and Tertullian is quite clearly making it clear that there are four Gospels. So again, what Tischendorf is saying is this is just brilliant historical information to confirm that the four Gospels were written in the first century and were written by the people they were written by. And I think he's correct. And I think there has been a witch hunt by modern scholarship over the last 150 years against Irenaeus and Tertullian, not really wanting to give full weight to this kind of, to these people. That's me. Back to Tischendorf. He says, I insist therefore to sum up the matter that the testimony of Irenaeus and Tertullian respecting the four Gospels is not to be taken as an isolated unrelated fact, but it, it must be considered as a valid result of all the historical evidence which was at their command. And how far we are justified in this is shown not only by the authorities already adduced the author of the Maritori list of New Testament books, the African translators of the Gospels into Latin and the originator of the Itala but by all the other witnesses who lived prior to the time of Irenaeus and Tertullian. Many of my readers are acquainted with the so-called harmonies of the Gospels, the works in which the four sacred narratives are coordinated into single one. In this way an effort has been made to draw the Gospels alone to as closely followed and faithful portrait of our Lord's life, those points which one narrator has brought more prominently into a view and the others being employed as supplementary, the other accounts, and a complete picture being the result. In these works, the narrative of John has been drawn upon to supply the incidents occurring in the last three years of Jesus' life, and to follow his course step by step. Harmonies of this kind were prepared as early as 170 AD by two men whose names are known to us. One of them was Theophilus, Bishop of Antioch in Syria, and the other was Tatian, a disciple of Justin, the great theologian and martyr. True, both of those works are lost, but Jerome speaks in the 4th century of the one prepared by Theophilus, and still existing, describing it as a combination of the four Gospels in one continuous narrative. Respecting the second, we have the testimony of Eusebius and, Eusebius and Theodoret, the later of whom speaks within an, in, an, an intimate knowledge. Tatian himself alludes to his work as the Gospel made up of four, the Diatasaron. Both of these men wrote other works which are still extant. In 180 and 181, Theophilus in edit, indicted the three books as uh, to Ochilicus, a learned heathen who had assailed Christianity. And this, uh, in this work, are extracts from Matthew, Luke, and John. It is especially noteworthy that he cites the later. Uh, to chapter 2.22, alluding explicitly to the name of the author. His words are, This is taught by the Holy Scriptures, and all inspired men among whom is John, who says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by him and without him. This makes it certain that the harmony of the Theophilus embraced the Gospel of John. The same is true of Tatian, for in his address 
to the heathen a work filled with learning and very decided in its tone, written probably between 160 and 170 AD. There are several passages quoted from John's Gospel, such as this. The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness apprehended it not. The light was the light of men, and all things were made by him. From this it would seem certain that his harmony, like that of Theophilus, although it may have taken some liberties with the order of the narrative, included the Gospel of John, and this chimes admirably with the statement of Bishop Bar Salabi that the Diatessaron of Tatian, accompanied by a commentary by Ephraim, and thus discriminated from the Diatessaron of Ammonius, began with the words, in the beginning was the word. These harmonies last mentioned, one of which must, with much probability, be inscribed to a date within the first 60 years of the second century. A far more worth than that would be gathered from a single scattered extracts for their preparation points back conclusively to time when the four Gospels were already accepted as a perfect record and when the necessity had begun to be felt of deducing a higher unity and a more harmonious completeness from them and the diversity of various books and the apparent discrepancies had rendered apparent. If these efforts are to be assigned to a date as early as the second decade, excuse me, Subsequently to the middle of the second century, it makes the inference a necessary one that the use of the recognition of the four Gospels must be assigned to a much earlier date. Totally agree. So basically he's saying there that there were these Gospel harmonies right from around about 160 AD. That's basically what he's saying. And these various Gospel harmonies that were based on four Gospels, which shows, again, that they were already authoritative, and that pushes the date of the Gospels back into the first century, and to the authorship of those Gospels. So that's basically what he's arguing for there. He goes on, similar testimony we owe to the contemporary of the two men just named Claudius uh, Apollinaris, Bishop of Hierapolis, and Phyregia, Phy whose epoch is assigned by Eusebius, uh, 426, to the reign of Marcus Aurelius. For in a fragment preserved in the Chronicon Pash Pashgale, he declares that if the Quadraciminians, so-called from holding like the Jews, that the 14th of Nisan was the day for celebrating the Paschal sacrifice, appealed justly to Matthew in support of the view that Jesus partook of the Last Supper with his disciples at the precise time of celebrating the Paschal offering. There must be an antagonism among, among the writers of the several Gospels. Now as in this context, Matthew, Mark and Luke must be arranged on the side and John on the other. The words of Apollinaris indicate that all the Gospels were conceded in his death to have equal value. <coughs> to this may be added that in one passage still extant in the same chronicon there is undeniable reference to John's allusion in chapter 1934 to the piercing of Jesus' sign. According to Eusebius, the choice of Dionysius as Bishop of Corinth occurred in the year 170 AD. The same historian has preserved for us Eusebius 423 some fragments of letters and other documents from the pen of Dionysius. To one church he sent in the epistolary form exposition of scripture, and to the Romans he wrote after admidverti uh, animadver sorry, animadverting severely upon the efforts to discredit the genuineness of his own letters. That, we, that it was not all strange that men sought to discredit the gospel since these two were documents his value was so great that their authenticity should be indisputable. The expression Holy Scriptures might not necessarily refer to the New Testament, but the word which Dionysius employs writing respecting the law, the same term which Clement of Alexandria uses, Strom, page uh, 7, verse 1, has the same significant signification with the expression New Testament, and relates evidently to the books which were then accepted as consti constituting the New Testament canon. The apology written by Athenag um, Athenagoras of Athens in the year 177 AD contains several quotations from Matthew and Luke. It displays also unmistakably marks of being influenced by John's Gospel 
of, as for example in the passage which speaks of the Logos as the Word of God and which alludes to the Son of God who is in the Father as the Father is in the Son. It contains the very expression found in the first chapter of John, third verse, all things were made by him, and in the seventh chapter, 20th verse, as thou father art in me and I in thee. I'll just make a point here. What I'm beginning to see here is a, as a massive